now we are starting the second one with the presentation of my dear friend from Zagreb, Sandra Krizic-Roban. Welcome. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you for finding a while for us, despite you are uh, in, the, in the middle of the, another conference. <laughs> <laughs> so, a multitask person um, and a hardworking uh, curator and researcher, Sandra Krizic Roban. Just let me briefly introduce her. She holds a PhD in art history and she is a critic, curator, lecturer, and writer. And she focuses on contemporary art, history, and theory of photography, post war architecture, and politics, and pu public space and culture cultural memory. She is also the uh, head of the Office for Photography, which is NGO, a nonprofit association dedicated to contemporary photography located in Zagreb, with the, also with the gallery space. The institution organizes um, exhibitions and many other activities um, for, for, for many years, actually. And she is, uh, of course, author of uh, many books and articles, and um, her main field of activity is photography, especially uh, women's, but also cultural migration and conceptual photography. And um, Sandra Krzysztof Roban is a senior scientific advisor uh, in the uh, Nuremberg Institute of Art History in Zagreb. And um, and she um, she um, and the photography and visual visual culture at uh, Philos philosophical faculty in Osijek. So uh, Sandra, uh, we uh, we know each other for uh, for a long time actually, and we shared some research which researchers in the past. And I hope this is not the uh, finished chapter in our common history. So today, Sandra uh, will uh, present us her um, paper titled And what, we, uh, what did we save in the end about women's photographic practices after Second World War? It's the part of your uh, big uh, research chapter as well. So I'm looking forward to hear it and Sandra the floor is yours thank you uh, thank you Marika and thank you for inviting me again um, I'm sending you greetings from Madeira it's 20 degrees and it's full sunshine outside so I hope you have a similar conditions as I do even though I'm multitasking as always snowy snowy Warsaw <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> white Christmas will you have at least. So um, the, my research um, somehow coincides with um, uh, activities that Marika and I shared for numerous years. And for me, this was a really interesting way how I look into my own work and how I develop certain ideas out of the research that was going in a different directions all the time all the time, starting from the conceptual photography that was my focus for many years. And from that point, uh, I turn into the women's uh, photographic practices, uh, even though I never plan uh, to do something like that, but you know, you never know what might happen in your life. So this is more or less what I will talk about today. So, um, one of the starting points of my multi-year research that preceded the exhibition Floodlit Room is based on accepting terminological fluidity that stems from the concept of seeing differently, as the American uh, feminist theorist Claire Raymond refers to the women's gaze. With the selection of works that was preceded by extensive research and discussions with artists, this exhibition acknowledged the authenticity, uh, authenticity and resonance of women photographic practices regardless of whether the artist decided their entire lives to photography or only a part of it, whether they operated from the so-called safety of the studios 
or do they dare to venture out into the public space? At the same time, this showcases the parts that the, uh, they have taken, the ways in which their work was, has been valued or even uh, eventually forgotten, even cast aside. In the history of uh, Croatian photography, the women's photographic gaze was generally not considered challenging and there was a prevailing belief that women often operated within the safe comfort zone. At least this is how the uh, majority of uh, male uh, critiques uh, wrote about their works. The common perception that they mostly photograph uh, portraits, landscapes and children, as well as the idea that they were alone and unprotected while shooting led some critics to interpret their works in an extremely traditional, even paternalistic manner. Capturing images in public spaces, exploring the relationship with the body, addressing gender-related uh, issues, socially engaged themes, documentary photography, experimenting with the medium and later delving into conceptual reflections on the photographic medium and consequently, of course, artistic language. Uh, these are some of the aspects that can be considered through the women's perspe uh, photographic uh, perspectives uh, in this way. Uh, Floodlit Room, uh, this is the exhibition that uh, ended um, this Sunday and I was quite busy um, uh, organizing it, uh, point out the limitation within which uh, women's uh, photographic practice has been taking place, the obstacles faced by the artist and the importance and breadth of the meaning of photography as a unique medium upon which knowledge of both collective and individual uh, context depends. At the same time, we should be aware that some artists do not adhere to gender divisions and create unencumbered by the so-called politically correct terminology. In order to redefine visual perce uh, perception and the politics of seeing, my presentation of women uh, photographic practices aims to contribute to challenging the paradigm of the so-called uh, women's themes uh, and making their works visible, of course. By examining their individual position and establishing a dialogue with the already existing issues, we learn to what extent they participated in changing the general geographic and cultural discourse. In doing so, women cease to be marginal participants and move away from the traditional value of hierarchies, which is why their history is no longer viewed with ignorance as irrelevant and ahistorical. Uh, women's uh, photography is characterized by so-called self-initiated works and while I was doing the research I come across only those works that were once presented in public while knowledge about what has disappeared or was destroyed or is inaccessible because of some reason leave the permanent mark. In the period between 50s and 70s, I focused on photo club split and photo club Zagreb, primarily due to the fact that the women's section was founded in 1973 as part of the activities of the Zagreb club, the only women's group brought together due to certain dissatisfaction with their own position in a primarily male environment. The split, a split club takes the lead because already in 1962 they started organizing the exhibition of Yugoslav women's photographers and stopped in early 70s. In addition to the activities of Zagreb and split clubs, the federal exhibition of women's photography, which has been held in Belgrade since 1975, contributed to the affirmation of women's photography in what we now call the region. As the, um, at the annual exhibitions, the members presented mainly those works that they themselves judged to be good enough, while in the documentation we can find information that they presented portraits, landscapes, sometimes images of children and everyday urban scenes. It is if, it, if we speak about the Zagreb group, it is a relatively coherent group of artists and they uh, often encouraged women photographers from other clubs to join them in future exhibition. 
The reviews of their exhibition could be found in daily newspapers and am uh, uh, among the rather banal comments we often read how they were alone and unprotected while uh, during shooting, how in the images we can see mothers taking care of children growing up in poverty and similar. Although there were no captions accompanying the photos that uh, would explain the circumstances or the motivation of the shootings, the writers who considered themselves as the critics often assumed the role of interpreters while in the reviews we can recognize their literary pretensions and the poor way of understanding women, not only in photography, but in um, a society uh, in general. Women photographers started to organize a or, uh, group exhibition in 1973, and each year around March 8, the new production was presented. There was no curatorial approach at that time, but at the end of the 70s, there was one group exhibition inspired by poetry, which means that each of them presented a work accompanied by a poem, while in 1978, they organized critical view of what they uh, entitled What I Like and What I Don't Like in Zagreb, in which um, they criticized the uh, neglected state of the city. From today's perspective, I have to add that there was no critical approach to their works. And in review, we can notice a general attitude about their sensitivity and sensibility as if these characteristics are inscribed in their bodies and minds. No one of those critics uh, was able to recognize something close to seeing differently. Therefore, I start to research from what was left, um, mostly in the collections, in the photo clubs, or the, uh, what artists keep themselves, taking care uh, of uh, their own photographs. And suddenly, <clears throat> a skillfully built compositions, documents of times and their views started to appear, emphasizing everyday circumstances with specific perspectives, tonal relationships and other ways that indicate the level of their photographic thinking. Besides certain number of indicators of their political, social and other views could be recognized. Uh, I split this presentation in several case studies, um, which I will talk about. The case study one is uh, uh, sisters uh, uh, Marasovic from Split. After completing a photography course for amateurs in 1954, uh, mm -hmm. the Marasovic sisters joined the photo club Split as the first female members following the club's re-establishment in the 50s. They were particularly active in the club's organizational exhibition activities during the 60s. Although Carmen <clears throat> is remembered as a long-standing club, I ho a quote, hostess carrying out this duty with particular love, end of quote, by one famous Croatian critic, Dusko Kecvkemet, her far more significant contribution was in organizing exhibitions of women's photography in which she herself participated. Carmela <clears throat> uh, took meticulous care of the club's archive and thanks to her efforts, we have preserved documentation from the period immediately after the association founding. She managed the, uh, the sending and receiving of photographs for exhibitions and competitions, tended to the darkroom and the club's membership, organized uh, outings and social events for the members. As part of their creative work is closely related to the documentation of everyday life, a specific shooting angles, graphism, and tendency to, uh, tendency to construct composition using geometric elements, especially what is possible to see in Anka Marasovic works, which are on the uh, left side of the screen, will highlight uh, their creativity in comparison to other participants in the scene. Both sisters were skilled photographers and have participated in photo salons around the world. The most common motifs in Carmela's works include landscape, people and scenes from everyday life. Anka was recognized for micro photographs featuring architectural motifs with the focus on detail abstract from the whole. 
In her compositions, she often emphasized diagonals using light to highlight the texture of materials, evoking various associative formats that are sometimes revealed by the title itself. Let me mention that the Marasovic sisters uh, showed their work at the exhibition of women's section of the Zagreb Photo Club in 1976. On that occasion, very influential photographer and president of the Zagreb Club, Juro Griesbach, noted that their work did not follow the development of women artists from Zagreb. And he remarked that, I quote, as randomly selected heterogeneous exhibits, they do not fit the concept of this exhibition, uh, end of quote. And I have to remind you that there was no concept at all. This casually stated observation points to the lack of understanding of women's photographic practices and the unsystematic examination of their work over the extended period. It also demonstrates how the photographic exhibitions were conceptualized during that time. Case study number two is Daniela Lushin, joined, who joined the uh, women's section of Zagre Photo Club after she came across a newspaper article about the exhibition that its members first held uh, in Zagreb in 1973. During the mid 70s, she exhibited her notable brick factory series. The photographs are entirely devoid uh, of people and the artist instead, uh, instead focus on the elements inside the space, their unique appearance and structure, making them seem like remnants from the distant time. She approached the motifs from various angles, emphasizing the volume of encounter objects, already aware that the production process would eventually be interrupted and the industrial facilities left to decay. Some of the photographs in the series reveal the influence of graphic arts of, on photography primary for their inversion of positive negative, producing unique photographic patterns dominated by the black and white aesthetics. One of the earliest preserved photographs by Daniela Lushin, taken at the workshop of his uh, father, attests to her developed sense of the new objectivity uh, aesthetics and the material world captured from the unique point of view. Similar to the works from the Brick Factory series, this isolated detail of the band pipe, uh, its purpose unknown and impossible to determine since we lack the contextual information, belongs to the industrial milieu and mass-produced objects presented in a refined and clear, almost scientific manner, depicting the very essence of the object in the artist's focus. Next uh, case study is Ivanchica Privora Kurtela, who partic participated in the exhibition of the women's section from 19, uh, 30, uh, 1973. What set her apart from other artists was an interest in human body, especially the body in motion, which stemmed from her passion for dance and her informal upbringing. Self-nude one to six, a series of six photographs, documenting shifts in the body position and the changing atmosphere of the space produced by movement, was realized as a self-performance for the camera, whereby the artist's creative intent is transmuted through bodily movements. For the second exhibition in 1974, Privora created life-sized photo, uh, photographs of dancers, exhi exhibiting them in a way that formed three sides of prismatic volume, like a hybrid photographic sculpture, which at the time constituted a unique example um, <clears throat> of perceiving the object um, and spatiality of photography on the local scene. Around the same time, she also creates a series one featuring a nude pregnant woman conceived as a series of sorts. The photograph which she multiplied and affixes uh, to the background in such a way as to achieve a densification of the composition and concentration on the center of mo uh, motif of the pregnant belly speaks to the conventional and traditional identification of female role to which, by her own admission, she did not give much thought at the time of shooting. 
In the photograph, the woman's portrait remains unrecognizable, to some extent blurred, while the focus is on the taut surface of the pregnant belly as a fun fundamental signifier of the composition. The visual language of this work is closely aligned with the conceptual tendencies that were at their peak in the 70s. In the context of Croatian arts, Jadranka Fatur, as a case study number four, is best known as a hyperrealist painter. In the early 70s, she briefly became a member of the Zagreb Photo Club, uh, which she joined to gain basic knowledge of shooting and, um, and developing photographs. Her initial foray into photography was not directly, re uh, directly related to painting, but stemmed for her desire to capture images. Fatur stands out for her penetrating documentary approach and sequences that reveal narrative protocols. She captured many photographs as uh, potential templates for her paintings, such as frames take, uh, taken in public transport, buses, trams and trains, demonstrating an interest in people and the interiors of vehicles, where she recognized the distinctive atmosphere. One of her early sequences was created in the 1970s, where she photographed the older woman descending a staircase from the local market in Zagreb. We can observe her documentary approach in several other shoots, where she captures the environment in which she lived and worked, the old Zagreb neighborhood of Trnje. She also documents her move to the new part of the city, photographic details like hand trails, balcony views and the like, while <clears throat> and the like. An interesting sequence uh, a focus on plastic bags washed and hung on the laundry lay um, in the newly uh, constructed houses. <clears throat> a simultaneously documentary and poetic, these photographs serve as a commentary on new consumer uh, needs and behaviors. Yadran Kafatu photographs uh, though limited in number because she was uh, making photos only in the, during the 70s and later she will completely stop, um, represent a significant contribution to the conceptual tendencies that dominated artistic developments in the 70s, especially considering the relatively small number of women artists active in the field of photography during that time. Uh, Jasenka Odic Jendrasic participated in almost all exhibition of women's section of the Zagreb Photo Club. Her, interest, her work is characterized by experiments with perspective achieved uh, through the choice of angles and the timings of capture, as well as a distinct darkened atmosphere without an emphasis on detail. On the occasion of the first exhibition in 1973, one critique in his review emphasized that this artist, along with a few other colleagues, creates, I quote, more individual and intensively expressive photography than their male counterparts. And I, um, I, know, um, I, uh, I found this uh, comment quite interesting because very rarely we will come across um, uh, such a critiques uh, comparing the male and uh, uh, women's gaze or photography as such. What is interesting in the distance she achieves is the distance she achieves by allowing enough, uh, enough room for independent development of the situation regardless of her possible intentions. Photographer and graphic designer Lydia Laforest was the first artist to experiment with various techniques in the post-war period. She enrolled in the Academy of Applied Arts in Zagreb, which was established as the closest example of the Bauhaus model in the local scene. The experimental approach of this institution during its short existence uh, between 1949 and 1955 influenced her artistic expression. As she herself uh, said in one of the printed interviews, uh, drawing, painting and printmaking techniques were the most significant aspects of her professional work, particularly evident in examples of graphic design where she incorporated her own um, original photographs. 
She was interested in camera-less photography and began to create using the then popular technique of contract printing um, as a black and, a black and white negative. A separate group of uh, works comprised biomorphic uh, photographs. Um, uh, so for certain works, it may be assumed that they were influenced by contemporary visual and musical events that she attended at that time. And they may also be connected to the rare similar experiments found in experimental photographic practice from the first half of the 50s in Croatia, which she might have come across during uh, her studies. And I would also add that the uh, auto portrait that she uh, shot um, in uh, Brussels during the uh, World uh, Fair was one of the rare auto uh, portraits of that time. Uh, and I, I was not aware of the, uh, of the fact that there are so um, few of them uh, if we look into the whole women's uh, photographic practice at that period. Uh, and I also apologize for the for the um, uh, uh, quality of my photographs. They, they are mostly taken from the exhibition because I didn't have uh, opportunity to prepare um, um, better, better slides. Uh, case study number seven is Liliana Sundac Zuani. Uh, she became an avid photographer during her student days. In the late 60s, she became a member of the photo club uh, Color in Rijeka, but disconnected with the prevailing outdated perspectives there. After that, she and her future husband, Andrea Zuani, founded the photo section Stroyer at the Faculty of Engineering in Rijeka. Rather than focusing on fine art photography, they were drawn to live photography, which they come across in the influential Swiss magazine Camera. And they incorporated this approach into their own work. They were most uh, more interested in capturing direct, less stage scenes where photography was seen as a means of documenting life. In these examples, we can discern the typical expression of the 70s, the liveliness on the streets, passersby, urban settings, and her focus on scenes from her own intimate life. In the later half uh, of the decade, however, she turns to what she had previously sought to distance herself from. In search uh, of the new visual language, she staged the uh, uh, scenes, capturing somewhat dystopic images with an emphasis on desolating surrounding the central motive. Wooden architecture, which is uh, on the right side, is another captivating photograph that in the vein of experiments carried out uh, within the new tendency movement that was very um, uh, innovative, um, new artist practice in the late 60s and from the 70s on, on the uh, region of the former Yugoslavia presents the multiplied mono element, a wooden slat, a technique often employed by certain artists associated with this movement. And case study eight, <clears throat> um, the in interest in structures in photography is linked with a new objectivity movement that we already mentioned today, which emerged in the late 20s and underscored a different perception of reality. Milica Borojevic style uh, follows this path, but remain atypical because her work revolves around a single motive, stones by the sea. And while on the on one hand we contemplate the matter of life, life fold, unfolding even without human presence, on the other hand, these examples demonstrate the power of photography to direct our gaze to one element, transforming what that what we see into visual relationship, an artistic act reading everything into symbolic to the factors of light and time. Why I choose her, this work is a rather a uh, very strange situation. So um, I will explain. Borojevic also participated in several exhibitions uh, of the women's section of the Zagreb Photo Club in 1978 at the exhibition where artists interpreted an illustration uh, of a poem 
curve series of mentally disabled patients in Loborgrad stood out, which was taken during a home carnival. This artist, who was trained in literature and in, 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 in cinematography, may have been familiar with the work of Diane Arbus from the early 70s, the famous scene of the costume party, take, party taking at the home um, for people with Down syndrome. In one review, the grotesque appearance on the characters in Milica Borojevic photographs was mentioned, alluding to the local influence by the painter Krsto Hegedusic and association of artist Zemlja, the earth, very influential in the local context. Her entire photographic list for C marks that you are seeing uh, on the screen is unavailable for research, underscoring the significant neglect when, neglect when it comes to the photography legacies of the women in Croatia. To conclude, for today's reception and the much needed contextualization of their works, it is important to note that some women artists use or used the mythology of self-archiving, primarily because they did not get the interest of institutions of, or curators that would adequately care for their legacies. Some of them self-initiated collecting of reviews published in the newspapers, and some of them recently started digitizing documents by themselves. Because of that fact, it is necessary to discuss self-archiving and self-organization as models for creating physical and digital feminist archives. And I have to add, they start to do this often unconsciously, out of the need to save traces of, uh, of their art. These procedures are important because they influence the formation of the society that wants to be recorded and remembered. In that way, researchers get already organized material for further analysis and maybe in the future, um, uh, for the future institution that will take proper care for saved uh, collections. And I have to add that um, as far as I know, um, the whole re region um, uh, does not have uh, a specialized institution that will take care on photography. We don't have any uh, photography museum. There is no institute taking care for photography, only some uh, NGO um, uh, developments or curators that they try to, to, to work on, on the local scene and without uh, um, establishing the proper institution, I would say that the lack of the material will be even uh, more drastic in the future uh, if, I, if I can judge from my own research. And that was all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra, for this um, amazing presentation. Will you have time to stay with us for the discussion after this panel, or you have to leave now? I have to leave, unfortunately. I'm, so I'm just a quick question from my side, because I have, of course, a lot of questions, and uh, having this slide by Milica, uh, Milica Borejo, Borojevic, yes. I, I, I would like to also... Uh, I mean, it's a very, you know, temptation to to text up, to make some trials of juxtaposing these artists and Polish uh, women photographers, of course, because there are so many common things. But I wanted to ask you <coughs> just very quickly about the about the category of self archiving. And do you think because I know that the status of these uh, women photographers were very um, different, like some of them were artists uh, educated in this way and some of them not. And could you please maybe just very briefly um, tell us about this category of being, you know, category of amateurism and the being of photographer amateur and do you think that the strategy of self-archiving is something which is against the marginalization um, of the, let's say, amateur photographers? So how do you see it? 
Yeah, this is rather complicated uh, situation. Of course, uh, majority of them were amateurs and they gain knowledge in the uh, uh, enrolling into the photo clubs and in photo clubs the the majority of talks about photography was about the technique or how to use light or uh, there was no uh, discussion about art so some of them uh, then decided to 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 switch to another association which was association for the artist in uh, uh, applied artists uh, ulupuk which was, I would say, uh, 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 better better for them, and they could uh, and they could, uh, of course, um, get uh, more knowledge and more discussion about the the uh, what they want to achieve through their art. Um, uh, so um, uh, I would say that they don't consider themselves as amateurs. Uh, they consider themselves. I mean. All of them, they consider themselves as artists. Uh, so uh, true, and you, I, as a researcher, I have to be very, you know, polite and uh, and not too critical if I want to get uh, all the informations that I could get. So I don't, I don't argue with them uh, in terms of uh, their artistic practice. But of course, there, are, there are numerous, there are numerous. Um, uh, um, differences uh, among them uh, and this um, self archiving uh, it's um, absolutely amazing because of uh, that procedure uh, I come across to numerous um, articles from the newspapers and so many informations that I I mean I can sit for I don't know years in archives or in libraries trying to you know pass through all the newspapers or magazines or, but there was someone who was really uh, aware of that fact that some sometime once uh, someone will come and ask for this information and uh, this for me was absolutely astonishing and from that point of view i don't know if i can uh, judge uh, uh, their artistic procedure but i can judge that they were, they were aware what they've been doing of course my critical approach toward the certain number of uh, artists um, that i come across is uh, different uh, some of them are better some of them are not so interesting of course but they didn't have any uh, possibility for higher education in photography and as you know uh, i was complaining a lot they start to teach at the academy of dramatic arts in the 90s uh, and uh, for instance in humanities you can't hear anything about photography even today in whole croatia so this is the fact uh, that we have to uh, take into account when we start to criticize the scene and and trying to emphasize who is better, who is, uh, you know. And if I compare it to um, Polish situation that I had opportunity to research, I would say that you know, the uh, uh, putting the academies all over the country was absolutely brilliant and it makes the scene much to grow and it makes the scene much better. We didn't have that chance, unfortunately. Yeah, but but still, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much, Sandra, for your answer. I think that it's rather obvious to me that they consider themselves as an artist, as, as the artists, also because of the strategy of self uh, arch archiving. The, I would. Uh, I, I, I was curious. What was the you know what what was the general opinion at that moment about their activities uh, of the critics and so on? But I I think that you answered in yeah, some way. I would say that there was no uh, no yeah no yeah. critique as we consider what critique should be, of course. But this is you know this is very similar to what I started to do when mm -hmm. I started to write. I was yeah. cutting my articles from the magazines and the newspaper and I have the whole archive 
physical one uh, at my home. So for someone who might be interested in my work once, it will be much easier, of course. This is also, you know, the, the procedure of self-archiving. I'm not the artist. I'm from the different branch, of course. But uh, there is no other way. You have to take care of yourself because I would say it's a strange world if you are not, I don't know, Marina Abramovic or <laughs> Sanya Ivekovic, it's hard. It's hard for the majority of artists. Not even uh, for both of them as well, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Sandra. And uh, well, fingers crossed for the institution devoted to the photography in Croatia. Until upon it will happen, we have office for photography and <laughs> and you as a as a head of, of this institution. Thank you so much and thank you for joining us.